Republican Congressman Tim Burchett of Tennessee is a member of the House Foreign Affairs and Oversight Committees. Uh, Congressman, great, great to see you again. Thanks for coming back on. Uh, are you going to support this uh, temporary spending plan? And, and uh, what, what do we say to the viewers at home who are kind of frustrated with these continuing resolutions and stopgap spending bills and just sort of kicking the can for another couple months? Well, it's nothing new, as you know, Jim. We haven't, and thank you for having me on, brother. It's always a pleasure. I believe it's, it's over 20 years now we haven't passed a budget. That's under Democrats and Republicans, and it's just a continuation of, of that can kicking that you described. And I, I've never voted for a CR. This is a so-called laddered approach where it goes off in regimented groups. Um, you know, I'd still like to see some border, some border security. Uh, we had HR2. We passed it in the House. It provided for um, locking down our border. You know, we've seen over 8 million people in the last three years, plus 3 million getaways, plus 100,000 children. We don't know, which is much more disturbing than any of that to me, that we don't know where they are. So those are the kind of things I'd like to see us start prioritizing. And I don't know why either party seems to be afraid of that. Um, and I, and I wish Schumer would take it up in the Senate. So I'm, I'm kind of hanging my hat on that right now. But I would like to see what's in it. Every time they say leadership's agreed to it, you know, that I'm the 435th most powerful member of Congress, as you know, there are only 435 of us. Yeah. Um, so I would really know what's in the details. And but to remind our viewers at home, the House Speaker Mike Johnson struck this funding deal with the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Uh, but some of the conversations that have been taking place over the last week or so, some some conservatives in the House Republican conference, I mean, it, they sound like they're calling for a mutiny at this point. I believe uh, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene has uh, issued some threats. Uh, Johnson says he's sticking with his this deal. How how safe is the future of uh, House Speaker Johnson, do you think, at this point? I don't know. I was one of the original eight, as you know, and it seems right. like it's mostly folks the original eight that are that are saying this and some of those people have loyalty to kevin mccarthy and and uh, would like to grind an axe there but um i think what we really need to realize is that, that mike johnson uh, he, he's a man of his word he's a man of god he loves his country he loves his wife and his family and so i'm i'm i'm, I'm still holding out hope for him i've given him a couple mulligans i'm i'm tired of going to the well with him i was mad about the fisa courts and um Re, re up in them, and I'm still mad about the border, and those are the kind of things I'd like to see us prioritize. But I'm not but ready he, to pull the trigger on getting rid was, of him yet. Yeah, I was going to say, does he have your support? He still does. He's still a friend. If he doesn't, I'll let him know, just like I let Kevin McCarthy know. Because, um, but you got to realize, I mean, literally, he was the guy who was organizing speeches on the House floor. You know, our agenda speeches that we'd give every night. And he would give away, I remember he gave away, a, I think, a, a bust of Thomas Jefferson. I got one. One time he gave away a baseball bat for the most people who gave the most speeches. I got one of those. But, uh, you know, and then the next day, literally, he's on an airplane going to Israel to talk to Benjamin Netanyahu, representing the United States of America. So, and he inherited a lot of that. And, and the difference between, everybody says it's the same piece of legislation. Well, it is, but the difference is, the side deals that we didn't know about that weren't discussed, Mike Johnson's discussed those with us, and he's put those out in front. And it, it, it's, it's a lot more, that, that part's appealing to me, but what's in it is less appealing. I don't like side deals, as you know, yeah. and um, $34 trillion in debt. Let me ask you this. The House, I guess, is expected to vote whether to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress uh, this coming week uh, for defying uh, these subpoenas. Uh, this is after he unexpectedly appeared before the Oversight Committee uh, this past week, which I'm sure you saw that. Um, now, I, I, I do want to ask you about this. Some of the same Republicans on that committee pushing to hold uh, Hunter Biden in contempt have defied subpoenas of their own. Don't you think that's a little hypocritical? Well, if you're looking at it on the surface, you would, but except those aren't real. They were, they were not standing committees. And if you remember... Um, then Speaker McCarthy had put people like Jim Jordan on that committee, which we are allowed to do under House rules. Um, uh, Speaker um, Nancy Pelosi disregarded or did away with those rules and kicked them off and would not allow them to serve on that committee. And she put Adam Kinzinger and, uh, well, and Liz Chang 
So they, not I, a I hear what you're saying, but let me ask you. I, you know, it was the January 6th committee, and, and subpoenas were issued, and, and subpoenas were defied. Uh, Congressman Jordan defied the subpoena. Congressman Perry, uh, there, were, there were a number of uh, members of the House Republican Conference. They just defied those subpoenas. Didn't they kind of make a subpoena sort of worthless? No, I don't think so. I, again, I don't think that's, that's really a standing committee. Nobody, both sides knew that what was up with that, Jim. That thing was was rigged from the beginning. I mean, you had ABC um, help facilitate it one night so they could have their their big their, when they would give out all the information. You know, I wouldn't doubt if they they or I'd ever watched any of it. I think more people watch reruns the Cartoon Network, honestly. Well, I think there I were think a lot of people locked. watching. It was a it was a committee uh, process uh, that was investigating an attack on the Capitol. Uh, not to go down that road, but that's what that committee was investigating. It, one of the most important events, uh, traumatic events to happen in this country's history. Uh, you don't have to tell me that. I was the very last member of the House of Representatives to leave the House floor. Me and Mark Wayne Mullen were, were walking out. And neither one of us, oddly enough, were called to, to, to testify before that committee about what we saw on the House floor that night. And, uh, you know, I think they already had their idea. They already were going after Trump. You and I both know that. And, uh, you know, they already had their answer, and then they just had to fill in the gaps. And that's exactly what they did. And now you're seeing that possibly Liz Cheney uh, met with witnesses prior to, which is a complete violation. They had troubles with people. But, that Congressman, were aren't you? I, I don't know if we, I wanted to get in a back and forth over January 6th, but just last weekend we were showing this new footage of uh, some of the rioters uh, going face to face with uh, Mark Wayne Mullen um, and Troy Nels, I believe, uh, when all of that was going down. I mean, it must irk you uh, when you hear some of your colleagues uh, talk about this being a tourist visit and that, and that they were just sort of that the rioters were led into the Capitol and everything. You must just think that you're from Knoxville. You must just think that's hogwash. Well, yeah. Um, they tell me to quit using terms like that because folks up north don't understand what I'm talking about. But, yeah, I mean, anybody who crossed those barriers, they were trespassing. I mean, that's yeah. pure and, and simple. They were trespassing. They were breaking the law. But they were doing the, more than uh, that. The, the take away from the – there was some that were let in and there was some that were let out. I'm not going to – I don't want to get into all that because, like I said, if they, if they crossed that line, they were trespassing. If the police told them not to enter – then they entered. They were breaking the law. Bottom line, there's no question. Yeah, and and assaulting police officers and uh, defecating in the doors of the Capitol and desecrating uh, our symbol of democracy. Uh, all right. Well, and, and I did want to ask you just very quickly, uh, at the very end here, Congressman, have you made a decision as to who you're endorsing for in the Republican uh, primary? Well, as I told the the. Um, the reporters, as I left the Capitol steps one day, I said, I'm for me. And they said, are you running? For, oh, you're running for president? And they all got their pencils out. And I said, heck no, I'm not running for president. I'm running for Congress, though. And I try to stay in my lane. I, I have um, President Trump's a, a friend. He's been very kind to me. Nikki Haley has come into town for me to do an event. And I know and I know uh, Governor DeSantis fairly well. So they're all people that I'm acquainted with. But but you know, Trump's going to win. If the Lord or the, or the U.S. Supreme Court takes him out, that's the only way he's going to get out. That's the only way. He will win, win the Republican nomination. You can say all you want to. I tell you, if y'all want to tick off Trump, you ought to tell Conway and some of those guys just to ignore him, because every time you talk about him, it just fires him up. And that's, and that's exactly what it does to the Republican base. And all it's right. just, it's a psychological but that's that is honest to goodness truth. Every time they slap another charge on him, his numbers go up. Well, if we if we ignore it, we risk normalizing it, don't we? I mean, he was on Truth no, Social today uh, praising Sammy the Bull, a mobster. Yeah, that, is that I, I that's not is that who you want representing the Republican Party as the nominee? Somebody who's praising Sammy I'll, the Bull. When he was in the mob, they couldn't get to him. So, I mean, is Sammy the Bull lying? You know, he said he yeah. surrounded himself with, with FBI agents that wouldn't allow the mob to get former FBI agents that couldn't get to him. And Trump said, yeah, that's 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 the truth. So but surely you, know, you don't want to you don't want a nominee of the party praising mobsters. No, but I don't. But what did he say? Anything that was untrue? Did Sammy the Bull say it was untrue? He said they couldn't get to Trump. 
That's what he said. That was basically what he was saying. You got yeah. retired but then, FBI. But then Trump went on to, to uh, talk about the judges handling his cases in the context of praising Sammy the Bull, which obviously is a veiled threat, sending a message to those judges. I mean, you, I, I can't imagine that you're okay with that. I'm not okay with any threats to any judges, obviously. But, you know, it just depends on how you take that. And I didn't take it as that. All I took it was was that Sammy, the, I read the I read the quote, Sammy the Bull just said that the mob couldn't get to Trump. And I thought that's, you know, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good endorsement if you if you got a, a mobster that's, that's that's killed multiple people and was wrapped yeah. up with John Gotti for his was turned state's evidence against Gotti. And then he yeah. says, we tried to get to Trump, but couldn't get to him because he was surrounded by, by he had FBI, former FBI agents. Yeah, I guess if you're running for president, why, why even, why even talk about a mobster? Why even praise a mobster? Thank a mobster? Why do that? That's, well, not, that's not presidential, is it? I've told you before, Jim, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. How, why Trump says things he does. He's a New Yorker. He's got that bravado. He says it. He lets it fly. Yeah, and a lot his of numbers New Yorkers don't up. like mobsters, but all right. Well, Congressman, great to talk to you as always. We appreciate it. Mobsters. That's why The Godfather is one of the biggest movies of all time. I mean, people emulate them. You see kids walking yeah. around with shirts You don't want on the president, and, you, know, you don't want the president, you know, lapping up endorsements for mobsters. I mean, do you? Well, of course not. But yeah. I just don't see that as an endorsement. I just see him saying what he thought was the truth. That's all. All right, Congressman. Thanks for your time. We'll be right back.